Hey, everybody. Thank you again for joining another Slim Sports interview. As always, I am your host, JD, and joining me today is a five foot three point guard from Florida Gulf Coast University, reigning threes, the knockdown shooter, TK Morehouse. How's it going, TK? Possessions. Oh, the Govs are rotating well defensively. Morehouse in desperation, able to hit. Hey, it's going good. It's going Great good. to have you on here. So happy to have a multiple time champion and all American, someone who has had an historic career at the college level. And no doubt you're going to have a historic career at the professional level. You spent the past three years at FGCU, calling it your home, being the, one of the star players there. Talk to me real quick about these past three years at FGCU and what that has meant to you. Um, the past three years at FGCU, I think it really um progressed my life in a upward manner. Like uh just coming from a JUCO and getting a chance to play at the D1 level, even though it's um a mid -ma mid major, but um we still was able to, you know, have a lot of success out of it and um it really helped my value as a player and my mindset as a player. Um, having the great coaches that I have around me is Tomesco and Coach Lyles and Murph and all the great minds that surround me. So they really helped me um excel as a player altogether. But yeah, I really appreciate these three years. Yeah, and you guys obviously have had so much success over those past three years. 89 and 10 overall during your three seasons there. 48 and two in conference. I mean, you have, you scored over 1500 points during your FGCU career, just not even including your JUCO years. Overall, you have over, I think 3000 points, something like that. You're an absolute bucket getter. Uh, 424 <laughs> assists at FGCU, 161 steals, knocked down 171 threes over your three year span as an Eagle. But the most impressive stat that I saw was the fact that you averaged 30 minutes a game throughout those three years, every single game, you're one of the, you're on the court, a majority of the game, very little time on that bench and getting a rest. What have you done throughout your college career to become such a reliable option for coach Smesco on that court? Um, I know that, I know that when it comes to uh, being reliable on the court, I have to have stamina. So it's just really what I eat. And, um, the times that I get in the gym, always being ready, um, putting in the extra hours um, by myself doing suicides in the gym. I'm um, just knowing that I have to have that stamina to play uh, FGCU basketball. As you, you can tell, like, we're always in transition, always in transition, always playing fast. So if I want to be a reliable um, and valuable player to the team, I know that I have to have my stamina to, to a, up the par. So it's just really – Staying, in, staying fit, eating right. Um, and that's really it, just taking care of your body. Yeah, you guys play a very fast-paced game under head coach Carl Smesco, one of the greatest college basketball coaches of all time, without a doubt a Hall of Famer. I call him the GOAT all the time. He brought in the mantra of reigning threes because you guys take, take and make more threes than anyone else in the country. Talk me real quick about Carl Smesco, about his coaching style, what he's done for this FGCU program. Um, I think what he's done that doesn't need much explaining. It's, it's it's just all there. I mean, you've seen it, and um, his style is just definitely fast and up up and down the court. Um, obviously threes, no, you know, no mid range game as much. Um, unless it's last last second on the on the clock or something like that, but. Um, he sees that the threes and the two, um, like the drive is the most efficient shot. Um, he understands as a team, um, we're going to get more better shots up with those shots. So um, I just feel like that's always been his focus. Um, he's been at this school for 20 plus years. Um, he talked about how he started and he started practicing outside before we, they even had a gym. So I think that leads to a lot of reasons of why he'll never, you know, leave this organization and why he loves this organization so much but um yeah I can that's all I can really say it's like a fast-paced game transition is his game getting points in transition and um once you if you got a shot in transition you open you shoot it he's not the type of coach that's going to be like oh slow it down half court half court game 
he's gonna go fast. So I think a lot of that speaks for itself though. For Absolutely. Sure. And I know he's done a lot for this program overall, but also for you, not just as a player, but as a person. I've seen your TikTok famous now. So I've seen some of the videos where you're in his office and having a little bit of fun. Uh, mm -hmm. I've seen the bond that you guys have had on the court and off the court at practice. Talk to me about what he's done for you, both as a player and as a person. Um, He really keeps, he's really honest. First of all, I want to say I'm not TikTok famous yet. Not yet. Not yet. I got to get to 20K at least. But um, I'll say that he he's the person that really tells um tells you things straightforward on how he feels and what he thinks. He doesn't really let back. And um, a lot of people will hold on to how they feel, but um, and what they think about certain situations, but he's so logical that he just tells you straight up on what he thinks, even though you don't think it's right. It's, it's most of the time it's the smartest thing to do. So I think that, um, that, that really taught me a lot just as a person to a way to think more logical as a person. And, um, to go with your first instinct. A lot of times your first instinct is what's right and um, you should go with it. Uh, as a person, I'll say, you know, that's that's really that's really much it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's definitely done a lot, not just for yourself, but for all of his players. A lot of his former players, as you know, are now his assistant coaches, including some of your old teammates. Uh, You've gotten to play alongside some incredible players while at FGCU. Not only has Coach Mesco brought in this reigning threes, you know, playing style at FGCU that's been dominant year after year, but he also brings in these high major calibers, high major caliber players, such as yourself. You had offers from Nebraska, some great programs in Fresno State, South Dakota State. But this past year, you got to play alongside Eliza Winston, who came over from Michigan State. Shea Carter, who was a multiple-time Division II All-American. Kendall Spray, who's now the video coordinator. She is. She came over from Clemson and played with you last year. And then, of course, Kirsten Bell, the one and only one of the best players just like yourself to ever come through FGCU. She's now with the Las Vegas Aces and won the WNBA Championship last year. What has it been like for you to play alongside such high-level talent, and how do you feel like that's helped improve your game as well? Um... I feel like it's 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 part of the game, especially playing for such a great program. Um, I think that it like we help excel each other in a way. Um, just playing with such great players that want to win and want want to be better at the game. Um, it helps me stay on the level that I am that I am with myself. I just want to be the best me in every situation possible. Um, I definitely will be miss playing with all those players because without them you never know where I'll be or where they will be in, in that sense and it's just like it's amazing to be able to say yeah I play play with some amazing talent yeah not only have you been able to play alongside amazing talent but every year you guys are going against amazing talent in high major teams all the time in your non-conference schedule since you've been there you guys have been teams such as UCF Michigan State LSU Kentucky and that's in just a regular season. I haven't even gotten to the March Madness tournament yet. We, we'll get into that a little bit later because that's a little bit more fun. Every year, you guys are beating these high major teams, not just going against them, not putting up tough competition. You're knocking them out by 20, 30 points sometimes. How would you describe FGCU as its reputation? Because as you said before, you're at a mid-major. FGCU obviously as a whole is a mid-major school. But would you consider the women's basketball program to be high major caliber? Oh, for sure. We, uh, I feel like the this program, the women's basketball program, gets taught like we get high caliber um, teaching. We get high caliber studying. Uh, our film sessions are really high caliber. Our, our everything, everything that we do, things that we do in practice is what people do in the WNBA. Like it's like it's everything is really high caliber. And when people come here, they be like, "Wow, I did." I, I see what it takes, why it takes so much to be as great as you can. I mean, as great as we are, because it takes a lot. So it's, it's definitely, um, it takes a lot. Um, can you say the question again, the last part that you said? How would you describe their reputation as far as the fact that they're a mid-major, but would you consider them to be a high major? Oh, okay. 
Yeah. Um, but I would say, even though we're like a mid-major and all, I feel like there will be a point where, um, you know, we'll they'll be able to move up in the conference and play even higher, uh, high, high major teams. Um, it's just, it's hard. It's really hard for our team and for FGC with general to get the recognition that they need or, or they should get. As you've seen with like the NCAA tournament in that in that sense, but until uh, I feel like until we get into a better conference, the recognition of uh, FGCU women's basketball will always stay the same. Yeah, and obviously you just said as far as the reputation when it comes to March Madness, uh, the NCAA tournament. The past three years, you guys have made it. The past two years, you guys have been twelve seeds. After last year, you guys went 30 and three overall, 15 and one in conference. And then this year, you guys went 33 and four overall, 17 and one in conference. Both years being named 12 seeds. A lot of people looked at that like it was disrespectful. I know you guys thought that as well. But both years, you guys advanced to the round of 32, beating Virginia Tech last year, who this season they were a one seed. And then this year, of course, beating Washington State. Do you feel like FGCU should have been a higher seed? And if so, why? Um, yes, because we are a high caliber team and um a lot of teams that we do play, we play just as um as good as them. It's just the fact that we are in the conference that we are in. Um honestly, in my personal opinion, I don't mind. I didn't mind being put in that position. Cause if we're I'd rather start a game off playing Washington State than playing South Carolina and not making it past that first round. So personally, uh, we did, we did, we always feel like it's uh, disrespectful, but in a way we're also like, that's one of the game, like let's get to the next one. And that's kind of what it, it has been. Yeah. And you yourself seem to turn it into another gear when you get into these high level game situations. I mentioned, you know, some of these high major teams that you guys have gone off and beaten in Kentucky, LSU, Michigan state, but Throughout your three years, every time there's a close game or a tough competition or a championship game, they're always looking to you as that op- as one of those primary options. During your first year there, uh, you ended up going against number 14, Arkansas, and you went off for 35 points during that game, 28 points this year in a close contest against Mercer. And then to start the season, you guys went to Hawaii. Very jealous of that, by the way. I've always wanted to go to Hawaii. And you played number two, Stanford, one of the top teams in the country every single year. And you went off for 26 points. And then to cap it all off for the season before the tournament started, you were named ASUN Tournament MVP after putting up 20 points against Liberty. What is it about these must-win scenarios, these high-level competition games that seems to kick you into another gear? Um, I just... I just notice um, what what is needed out of me. Um, sometimes, you know, I will, I will give. I only sometimes I only give what I feel is needed, and that's that's something I have to work on. Just pushing myself even further to know that I can get to a um, a higher a higher place, or I'm, I don't know how I should say it. But um, it's just knowing like my position and that how, how good I, I have to believe how good I am and what I can do. And I love winning, so I'm going to do whatever it takes to win. And even when it comes to playing uh, overseas and playing professionally, um, whatever team I go to, I know that winning is always going to be something that that's going to stick with me. And um, I knew that I had to push myself even further. I knew I had to become a scorer and not just a facilitator to win those games. But other than the Stanford game, we did not – But. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you guys, like I said, tough competition, and you're a very tough player. Like I said, you're a high major caliber player playing at FGCU, which, like we've said before, is it's it's got to be considered a high major program now, if not eventually, because of all the success that they've had. I think you guys have won the past 20 ace on tournaments. I don't know. I can't keep track anymore. But <laughs> yeah, the, like, Carl is in a house, a house name, is in a house no name in around the nation yet, so. It will be soon, and it should be because I know the past three years that you've been there, every single year you guys are going to March Madness. Your first year you guys went and played a very tough Michigan team, 
got bounced in that first round. But the past two years, like I said before, you advanced to the round of 32, beating Virginia Tech last year, beating Washington State this year. Walk me through the past two years in that March Madness tournament. What was it like to play on the grandest stage in college basketball and win as a mid-major in the first round each year? Um, It just feels like a like a woosa moment like uh it, it's like a great feeling as if like you have you know you have another chance to advance and go as further as as far as you can especially in uh school's history um having that chance to make school history it's a great feeling um it's just it's surreal i feel like because it's like a lot of people um doubted us and didn't feel as as if we uh would be there not just like our fgc fans but just nationally um, but after we won the first year, a lot of people were um nationally was known that you know we we shouldn't have been ranked as we was and we're, what type of team we are and what we can bring. But um, yeah, I'll just say it'll be a surreal surreal moment. And even though we uh, it's it's gonna be hard. We notice that we have to be in the moment and play as hard as possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, I want to say because I just thought of this. You guys were getting some recognition because when they announced the bracket on national television, they always ask, oh, who could be a big upset? And all of the re- reporters that were on the panel said FGCU is the team to watch because of Carl Smesco. They mentioned your name. They mentioned Shea Carter's name because of the success that you guys have had. So clearly you guys are finally getting some of that recognition and you definitely should because over your past three years there, you were a Sun Player of the Year this year, three-time first-team All-A Sun, WBCA All-American Honorable Mention. You were first-team All-American at the junior college level at Western Nebraska. Great college career. Sadly, now that's come to an end, but now you're getting ready for the professional level, heading overseas. What has that experience like been for you so far, and what are you doing to get ready for the pros? Um, so far it's been, it's like a, a baby first getting born, not knowing anything, not trying to understand everything. Um, especially like what agents to pick and how, you know, which agent is really for you and is going to help you be successful, um, for your years to come. And, um, I think that I have a good agent with me and he's got me, he, he's got my name out there to a lot of teams in uh, Germany, Hungary, Sweden, and Greece, uh, so far. Um, Athens, Greece is a place I would say is somewhere that I'm um, looking forward to go to, but um, I'm still um, waiting on contracts, um, people deciding my value, which I I know my value. But um, at the end of the day, it's been a surreal moment to know that um, I came from what I came from and the story that I had and just being the first generation of doing these things in my family in general has been a great success in itself and I just have I've been so grateful um especially also coming from uh being a third uh third option in high school type situation to AAU and AAU coaches telling me that they didn't think I was going to be playing at the college level or I probably only played JUCO and then that's it so it's like it's all it's always been like a I believe in myself moment and just proving to myself like how far I can go and I'm still proving to myself right now and I can't wait for this uh, experience overseas for sure. And then I can hopefully get a, a training camp, WBA training camp uh, invite. It, Absolutely. It Absolutely. I'm sure that's in your future because I've seen the work that you've put in one of the hardest workers I've ever seen on the court. Definitely one of the fastest I, I've done stats for you the past three years. I'm looking down on one end and the next thing I know you're at the other end. I have no idea how you get there so fast. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, I am so happy that I've gotten to see you play in person. I can't wait to see what you do overseas. And I'm so happy that I got to have you on here. Finally, definitely one of my biggest women's basketball player interviews that I've done so far. Thank you so much for doing this with me, TK. Thank you. Absolutely. Keep me updated with your career and I'm going to be supporting you all the way. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good luck on everything. Thank you. <laughs>